As you can see, this is my own Minecraft server in Minecraft 1.20.6. And to prove it to you, I'm going to kick myself out of the server. As you can see, I just kicked myself because this is my server. If you want to learn how to create the server, stay on this video. Let's go ahead and get started. Now, before we go ahead and get started, I have to let you know that this tutorial is specifically for creating a free server hosted on your own computer, which means that for this server to be on and your friends to join, you will have to keep your computer on and the server launch. And also you will have to port forward this server, which means that you have to share your IP address and sharing your IP address is not ideal. That's something you don't really want to do. You only want to give your IP address to your closest, closest friends because people who use your IP address could even find out the exact location where you are right now. So how do you prevent that? Well, you create a server using a service, a paid service, like for example, Apex Hosting, our sponsor. Now, Apex Hosting has been here for a long time and they have a bunch of different options for you to create a server. It could be either a Java or a Bedrock server, a server that is open 24 seven. So your friends could join without you having to turn on your computer and without you having to give them your IP address. Now, you could also install mod packs in the server, more than 200 mod packs, and this could all be done in less than five minutes. They also have locations all around the world, so you don't have to worry about lagging. You could be in Japan, Brazil, Texas, wherever you are, you will have a good ping because of all the variety that you have when choosing a server. But yeah, just remember that in the first link in the description, you could get 25% off with Apex hosting. Go ahead and click on the second link in the description, which is gonna bring you to a written guide on how to make a Minecraft server. If you were to have any questions, you could read through this guide. Once over here, you're gonna scroll down and you're gonna go ahead and click where it says download. Now, I don't want you to close this website yet because we're gonna have to use it again. So keep this page open just in the background. And once you click in download, you'll be over here where you're gonna be able to download the Minecraft server 1.20.6 jar file. Go ahead and click on this little green line in here, which will begin the download for that file immediately. Go ahead and drag and drop that file into the desktop. Once you download it, you can find it here in your recent downloads or in your downloads folder within your computer. With this file in the desktop, we are kind of ready to start. But remember I said, don't close the website. That is because for this specific update and actually any Minecraft update above 1.20.5, you will need to install Java 21. One. Now, if you're not familiar with Java, I'm not talking about Minecraft Java. I'm talking about Java, the software that Minecraft Java is run on. You're going to need to have some type of Java if you want to be able to install these jar files. And this specific jar file requires you to have Java 21. That's why you're going to go to our guide in the second link in the description. And you're going to click where it says Java 21 here in the requirements. And then over here, you're going to select JDK 21, this option right here, then select Windows and you're going to click X64 installer and you're going to click on this little blue line in here, which will begin the download for Java 21, at least Java 21, the installer. Now we're going to have to install Java 21 if we want to be able to run this jar file in here. How do you install Java 21? You simply double click on it. Go ahead and double click on it. Now, as you can see, I already have this software installed in my computer. So I'm gonna go ahead and reinstall it just so you guys could follow along and see how this installation process works. But it's actually really simple. All you have to do is click next a couple of times in a simple installer menu, and then you'll have Java 21 and then you'll be able to open this file. Now, for example, when I installed Windows 11, I noticed it didn't come with any Java. So opening this type of files was impossible. They wouldn't open. But yeah, once you're over here, go ahead and click on next, next, wait for Java 21 to install. And that's it. Like I was saying, Windows 11 didn't come with any Java, so I had to install this manually. And if you have Windows 10, you might have an outdated version of Java. How can you check which Java do you have? Let's go ahead and wait for this to finish, and then you could go ahead and delete it from your desktop, and then just keep the server file. How can you check which Java do you have? Just click where it says search down here, and then type auto remove programs. And once it opens, you're gonna click where it says search apps, and you're going to type Java. That is going to bring up which Java instance you have. For example, I have Java Kit 21. Some of you might have Java 7, Java 8, 17, 18, whichever version it is, just know that you need Java 21 for this to work. And I'd recommend that you get rid of any older installations. So just go ahead and uninstall your old ones. Always make a copy and a backup in case you need to use them again. But for this specific server to work, you're gonna need Java 21. That is very important. And I don't want you guys complaining in the comments because you didn't get the server file to open. Anyways, once you have updated Java, go ahead and create a new folder in here in your desktop or whatever you feel like having your server. And you can name this folder whatever you want. For example, I'm gonna name mine Apex Hosting. Why not? Because it is simply the best service to create a server with. Now go ahead and drag and drop your server file into your folder that you just created. Open that folder app. And now you're gonna make sure that you rename this server file to just server.jar. Mine says server three. That is because I have downloaded this file in the past and it just changes the name to keep track of it, but just change the name to server.jar. With this file, all you have to do now is double click on it and that'll begin the extraction of different files as you can see in here. Wait for this extraction to stop once you see a ULA 
ulatext file, which should come up right now. As you can see, ulatext, and then go ahead and open up that file. With this file open, go ahead and change this ula equals to false to true. It has to read something like this, ula equal true equal true, and then go ahead and click on file, save, and then close this file. And once you did that, go ahead and double click on the server.jar file one more time. And then that is going to open this little console in here. Just give it a couple seconds. As you can see, this is a console I was talking about and all the files are extracted in the background. And now our server has created and our world is actually open right here. We have a world that is open. Let's go ahead and stop this server running, however, because we're not done. Let's go ahead and type STOP, stop, the word stop will stop your server and then press enter. And that will stop the server from running and it will also close that console. With that done, we now have to do a couple of things. First of all, we're going to create a launch file that we're going to use to launch our server all the time. And then we're going to add our local IP address to our server. So we are then able to port forward it so our friends could join. Now, the first thing that we're going to do is create that launch file so we're able to open our server and also customize the RAM amount that we give our server. Go ahead and click right click on here on this folder, click on new and then click text. This text document, we're just going to open it as it is a blank new text document. And in here, we're going to head back either to the description of this video, to the first pinned comment on this video, to our written guide on the website or to the official Minecraft website where we downloaded the server file from this official website in here. And then we're going to copy this purple line in here, the Java dot 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 this line in here. We're going to select it and then press control C and we're going to come back to this blank document and we're going to control V. We're going to paste it. Like I said, you could also find this line in the description of this video. And actually in the description of this video, I'm going to give you more options for this line. So you could have different RAM servers set up. If you are a little bit confused right now, you will understand in a second. The first change that we're going to do this texting here is that we're going to change the name of this part right here that reads Minecraft server 1.20.6.jar to just server.jar, server.jar. So go ahead and delete this part in here. You just want it to read server.jar. Why do you want that? Because it needs to match your server.jar file. So whatever name you gave to this, let's say that you change the name of this, you're going to give it to this one as well. It has to match the exact name. The next thing that we're going to change in here is how many RAM gigabytes we give the server. For example, right now it has 1024 megabytes, which is equal to around one gigabyte of RAM. However, depending on how much RAM you have on your computer, which is something that you could always check by going to your this PC, if you go to your PC and then you right click in here and you click on properties, you will be able to see how much RAM you have. As you can see, I have 64 gigabytes of installed RAM. So I'm going to be able to go back here and I'm going to be able to give this server a lot of RAM because I have 64 gigabytes. Let's say that you had something like eight gigabytes, 16 gigabytes. Well, then based on that number, you're going to choose how much you give to the server. A good number that I'm happy with is around a gigabyte of RAM for every 10 to 20 players in your server. As long as it's just a normal server that is just running a vanilla server without mods, a gigabyte should be good for around 10 to 20 players, sometimes even more. But you know, since I have so many gigabytes, I'm actually going to change this number. To do that, just select the 1024 and the M in there and then type in how many gigabytes you want to give it. For example, I want to give the server a gigabytes. In your case specifically, you don't have to give it a gigabytes. You might want to give it something like four, two gigabytes, six gigabytes, maybe eight, maybe 16 gigabytes. Like I said, it will all depend on how much RAM do you have. And then once you're happy with the amount of gigabytes that you gave it here, which is the max amount of gigabyte, then you're going to change the XMS part from 1024 m to 1 g so you're always going to put the number then a g for gigabyte and then you're going to change the second one to 1 g which is this is just the minimum ram amount that we're going to use for the server and then this is the max that we're going to allow the server to have keep in mind that if you give your server a gigabytes it doesn't mean that your server will always be using a gigabytes just that it is allowed to use up to eight gigabytes now once you're happy with the amount of ram and you change the name in here to match your server file go ahead and click on file then click on save as and then here you're going to change the name, the file name to run that B A T. And then where it says save as type, you're going to put all files. So make sure it says run that B A T all files and then click saving here. And then you could close this text document. And as you can see, we now have a run that BAT file. And if we open it, we actually get this console and our server will start running after a couple seconds. So you can see it's starting the server in here. It's downloading all the files that it need. And we just need to give it some time for the server to run, right? 
Well, now we have that, but we also want to port forward the server and we want to have our friends joining. Now, the first thing that I'm going to do is to stop the server by typing in a stop. This, this console works the same way as the other one. You could type in here the commands and then the server will respond, right? So let's just stop the server. Now, what you want to do is find the server.properties file, which you should have in here. It's right here for me, server.properties. Then you're going to right click it and you're going to click edit in Notepad. Or if you have Notepad++, which is free to download, you're going to go ahead and open it. Once you're in here, you're going to look for a specific line called server IP address. And keep in mind that what we're about to do, it's only necessary if you plan on port forwarding the server. So friends from all over the world could join you. Then this is the part that you want to do. If this is too complicated for you, guys, just use that first link in the description. 25% off your first Minecraft server with Apex hosting. It's the easiest way to set up a server. Anyways, if you're still convinced that you want to go ahead and do this, just go ahead and click on server IP address. And obviously in here, we have to add an IP. What we're going to add in here is our local IP address. To do that, just click on search down here and then type command prompt just like that and open up the command prompt. With the command prompt open, we're gonna go ahead and type ipconfig, just like that. And then we're gonna go ahead and press enter. That is going to give us a bunch of information, but we are just looking for one specific number in here, which is the IPv4 address, which is this line in here. So go ahead and look for that line and then select this number at the end. This number might be similar for a lot of us, but might be different for some of you. So just go ahead and select that number and then press Ctrl C to copy it. Now go ahead and close out from command prompt. Once you're back in here in the server properties, find the server IP address and then just Ctrl V to paste that IP address in here, the one that we just copy and then go ahead and click on save. You could also play around with the settings of the server in here. Like for example, you could change the difficulty to hard, let's say, and you could change things in here. Just read through every option that you have in here and they're pretty much easy to understand. Anyways, let's go ahead and click on save again and then go ahead and close out from the notepad right here. Once you're back in here, go ahead and run your server, which then is going to open your server again. It's going to start it up. Now you already have your local IP address added. So all that is left is to port forward the server to have your friends to join. The first thing I'm going to do, however, is actually join my own server. I'm going to go ahead and open Minecraft. And if you want to follow along, just open Minecraft and then just go ahead and launch Minecraft 1.20.6. So I'm going to go ahead and skip this part. I'm just going to go ahead and open regular Minecraft, vanilla Minecraft, and I'll see you once I'm in the game and everything. So you don't have to just wait for all of this to load. Now, as you can see, Minecraft already open and I actually went ahead and put the server here on the left side and the game on the right side so you guys could just follow along easier right so what you're gonna do now to join your own server is click on multiplayer and then here you could either join using direct connection which you're gonna type this in here local host then these little two dots in there and then 25565 which is the port of your server this number right here is the port of your local server and it should be that number for all of you unless you manually change it in the server properties if you have multiple servers running in the same computer then you want to change the port numbers for all those servers so when people try to join they know exactly which server they have to join using the port number but by default this is what you're going to type to join your own server using direct connection another way that you have to join your server is to add it in here which all you have to do is click add server then give it a name like for example of course you already know it's going to be apex hosting and then in the server address just go ahead and put that ip before address that we copied earlier this number in here server address then click on done and that is going to open the server in here it's going to add it in here so i'm going to go ahead and join that apex hosting server that i just created and as you can see it immediately comes in here in the left side you could see immediately my name just joining here everything joining here it's Cuba join. And as you can see, we also have X-Ray. That is because we just posted a video on this channel on how to use X-Ray. So if you want to go ahead and watch that video next, feel free to do so. Anyways, let me actually go ahead and take the X-Ray off because it might be a little bit confusing for some of you to follow along with the X-Ray. So once you have joined your server, you could actually even OP yourself in here if you use the server console. If you want to make yourself an admin, just go ahead and type OP and then the name of the person you, that you want to make an admin. In this case, it's myself. So I'm going to go ahead and type OP. It's Cuba, then enter. And as you can see, I immediately become a server operator here on the right side. Okay, so now you have joined your world. You know how to join your local server. How do you have your friends join? Well, the next step is actually port forwarding. And we actually have a dedicated video on how to port forward a server because it actually is a little bit more complicated than what we did. Not super complicated. Not saying that you won't be able to do it. You probably will. But I recommend that you go ahead and watch that video next because I don't want to make this video extra long. So I'm actually going to have that video coming up right now because that is actually the next step. Just go ahead and watch that video on how to port forward and you will have your friends join you in minecraft 1.20.6 in no time i hope you enjoyed this video if you did don't forget to leave a like and a comment and subscribe it's very important that you subscribe i want to get to 20,000 subscribers and i want you to be part of it anyways bye bye